The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum everyone and you're listening to Sisters Speak on Inspire 105.1 FM and you're here with me Faiza. Me, Amina. And me, Mariam. And today we're going to be discussing modest fashion. But before we get into that, Mariam, do you want to tell us what our show is about? So, our uh, is a, uh, sorry, uh, I haven't been here for like four weeks. So, what? Uh, so, our uh, show is a platform for Muslim girls to voice their own opinion on, opinions on current events and issues and even form discussions on general topics such as religion, culture, politics, social media. We want to note that all opinion and views are our own and we respect all other opposing views. Thank you for that. Um, so just to let everyone know, we will be discussing modest fashion. And before we get into that, we do this little segment, I'd say, on our show, which is Thought for the Week. So this is just something that we'd like to share with each other and our listeners and for our listeners to also get involved as well. If there is um, maybe, for example, a lesson that you've learned or something beneficial to you that you think will benefit others, please do let us know. And because um, I think it's good to you know, just relay certain messages on to each other. And how can they do that, Amna? You can um, text or WhatsApp us in on 0779481822 or you can call us on 01582481822 and we do have a Facebook Live, so yeah, you can... Yeah, I think it's live, I'm not sure. Okay, well, if it's... <laughs> it should be live. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if we are on Facebook Live at the moment, go check us out. You can leave a comment. Yeah. We like to hear from you lot. Yes, so first of all, thought for the week. Mario? I think I'm more excited. Like, I just really want to know yours. <laughs> oh, okay, so thank you. Liza? <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I've come back from Umrah, so it's only been like, I think it's been over a week, under a week maybe. Um, and so my thought of the week is based on that. So um, I went Umrah for 10 days and alhamdulillah this is my second time going and it was a very different experience to the first time I went to Umrah and because of that I faced quite a few challenges and struggles um, and whilst I was there I had this expectation to feel really um, enlightened sp- uh, spiritually I felt that it's going to be a time for me to recharge you know, I had all these expectations uh, in my head when I went there but when I went there um, none of my expectations were fulfilled or they weren't met and that began to really deflate my motivation my feelings I, I began to feel really really low um, but what I told myself on the second day that, you know, I'm so blessed that I'm standing right in front of the Kaaba. I'm so blessed that, you know, I have all these people around the world. I'm, st- I'm standing here right now. And what does that make me? That makes me a guest of Allah. And I began to tell myself that, you know, um, one of my friends actually told me that the more struggle you face, the more reward there is. So although last time I went to Umrah, it wasn't challenging and it was very smooth, This is a different type of reward that I was um, experiencing and different type of Umrah that I was experiencing. Um, And there was this one particular moment in my Umrah that really defined, um, I think, me as a person. And I think it really uh, gave me a really strong uh, perspective to kind of how to deal with hard hardship um so as i said to you i really felt low mentally low because it was really overwhelming um so one day i went to tawaf and i went at the night time and my sister and my mom were really really tired because they were constantly doing tawaf and i really listened to my body and i didn't really want to push myself too much because already i was feeling overwhelmed um and i made the word that in asr time i made the word to allah like please like i feel so low i I practically cl- cried and I, I said to Allah, I feel so low, you know, I, I feel so empty in the most fulfilling place in the world, like, please help me, show me the way. And I said, like, I'm going to be doing tawaf, could you just show me the way in that time? And this is like the fifth day, and uh, the, when I went to do tawaf, um, there was quite less people, which was not expected because it was like thousands of thousands of people at April time, it's almost like Hajj. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I, I, me, my, my sister and my mom were at the back and I was leading them. This is the time I was leading them. And I, do you know what the guys are, the Hatim is? So it's like a bit next to the car bar, like where you can pray. 
and it's really 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 hard to get to it's like where it's how hard to get to Hajar Aswad mm-hmm. the black stone so it's equally as hard to get to that yeah. as well so I went I saw opportunity and I literally dragged my mom and my sister and like I have claustrophobia so I was like dying but <laughs> somehow I felt like Allah showed me the way like literally opened the space up yeah and I went there and then there was this guy he literally like like he said come here come here and there's like enough space for me to like there's like three spaces in front of me and oh he's like come here and I was next to the zamzam water and believe me it was so comfortable I had my bag there and this is the most squashiest area you could actually be in yeah and I I felt like crying. I was like, wow, Allah, if Allah wants to make a space for you and he wants to make you a way, he'll make a way. Like, that was so comfortable. It was, it was supposed to be like, people are supposed to step on your head in that area. <laughs> like, that's, how okay. squished, that's how squished it's supposed to be. But literally, Allah, like, I had such a comfortable space. I, I had, like, there was enough space for me and my sister and my mom to pray. Oh, my gosh. Together. Yeah. Because someone amazing. just told us, like, yeah. pray here. So then that was one thing that I was like, wow, like, you know, there's a Quran ayah that's actually my screensaver, um, and it's uh, the translation says, "And we will provide for him where he does not, where does not, where he does not expect, and whoever replies relies upon Allah, and then he is sufficient for him." So that yeah. really, like, I felt like that was definitive for me because I felt so overwhelmed, so empty, and then that happened. Then after my second uh, one twelve later, I touched the cover. Again, I found another opportunity. <laughs> so, like, two things that we could achieve all those five days. On the, the day that I made the world, like, I cried to Allah. That's the day that Allah made it a happened. way for me. And that made me think that, like, Allah does listen to you just because you have anxiety or depression or any kind of mental health uh, problems. Or worries. Or, or worries or anything. If you're just feeling really low, that Allah is actually listening to you. But you have to kind of take that onus on yourself to call out to him. And also be patient as well. Be patient. That's another thing I was going to touch upon that. You know, if you be patient, you know, it's something that people always say, but it's something that I really experienced there. If you be patient, you actually just wait. Allah actually, it will come to you as it well. It will really come to you. Believe it. If you will really believe it, demand Allah to give it to you, he'll give it to you. Because he shies away when you when you ask for dua, he shies away not to give you anything back. Mm-hmm. So imagine if you keep asking Allah for the same thing over and over again, you'll get it. You have to believe yeah. you'll get it. And uh, I think that kind of uh, experience made me really think that, you know, you know, we, we it's so easy for us to say that, you know, Allah's all listening. And he's always there for you. But when you experience personal things, I think that really shows you, like, this is it. This is what, like, you no matter what challenges you face, um, no matter how hard things get, you're not alone. And I think for everyone out there, if you ever go to Umran, especially if you have, like, anxiety or you know, any other issues that you feel that could be a barrier, just know that you're there. Allah invited you as his, as his guest. And he's really listening to you. Like you're yeah. there. You're he, you're you're blessed in a very blessed moment. So that's my thought of the week. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been like so like I was, over the moon. I was literally like I kept I couldn't just couldn't stop thanking Allah. I was like, wow, you <coughs> what a privilege you gave me. I felt so empty from those five days. And then Allah gave me that privilege. Like that is a privilege I got. Yeah. And my mom said something to me in a couple of days later that there was three du'a, duas that she was making and she really wanted to pray in that. And the day oh, that oh. I... Oh my gosh, that's like, so I'm not saying it's because of me, but I'm saying the day I really prayed for it, that's the <laughs> day she, her wish got fulfilled. So it just shows that like how powerful du'a is. Yeah. Like, don't underestimate du'a. Just don't underestimate. And Ramadan's coming up. Just keep yeah. praying. Keep True praying that. for yourself. Keep praying for everyone else as well. Yeah, that is my thought of the week. Well, that was <laughs> really inspirational. I, know, like, I love really that. Really inspirational. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I'm so alhamdulillah. blessed. Um, Amina, do you want to do yours? Um, I guess following on from Mariam, I think a lot of what has she what she said, we can all take it on for Ramadan. Um, my thought of the week was, I think I may have mentioned it in our last show, but maybe I can again. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, oh, I have been thinking about it a lot. And it's the thought what of the week. Yeah, um, it's revision. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, but... Someone has been doing their coursework. <laughs> no, I mean preparing for Ramadan. Yeah. Um, like, if you do feel like you've been lacking, the reason why it's here is because to pick yourself up, you know? Like, we need to have some faith and... Um, like don't have faith in yourself as well like we're all capable of so much and like this month is here to to help us strengthen our iman and not only like do it by yourself but we have each other like we have our friends and family to help us 
along the way and I think that's something we kind of forget like obviously a lot of it is really personal but I think if you tell someone close to you like this is like one thing I want to achieve then maybe you can help each other yeah. achieve that that's true yeah so that's mm, my thought of the week <laughs> I feel like mine kind of just springs off both of yours especially in terms of um being patient if especially if you're if you like because if you want something or if you need something and you're asking for it as well be patient because it will come to you or if you're looking for some clarity or you want like you just need some sense of like direction because obviously we all feel lost sometimes you know sometimes we feel like robots in a constant like cycle every day you know wake up go to school go to work go to uni go to college come home do this do that go to bed wake up again and sometimes you do feel a little bit lost and you just need a little like push or a little bit of like clarity and I think sometimes when you know you're praying I think it's so important that you keep that like concentration in what you want and like not let anything of the dunya kind of influence that if that makes sense so you're literally just so focused on what you want and you know, you're so deep in thought and deep in concentration within that dua or within that prayer that, you know, being patient, you will know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will listen and he will find a way for you. And it's all, you know, having that um, tawheed as well. Because I feel like sometimes people, well, just generally speaking, like you'd want something and then you'd just be like, okay, so you'd only turn to Allah because of that reason. And then you just continue doing so and so expecting it to come but it doesn't work like that you can't just I feel like it's it's not right you know only turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you want something but do you understand where I'm coming from yeah I kind of lost my train of thought where I was going there <laughs> no I think one thing that you touched upon is um it's becoming like a slave to dunya yes. it's so easy to become engrossed with like daily affairs and, and the daily want for something and especially at I would say, like, my personal experience is allowing people to... Um, having fear in people, I think it sounds very small, but, you know, when you work in a work dynamics or um, in school or university and you feel overwhelmed because of the people, of the expectations of you, mm -hmm. just remember they're just people, they're just human beings, and, you know, you have God by your side and he expects very little from you. He just wants you to call to him. And he, he has your back. I mean, everything in this world is temporary. Humans are temporary. But at least the one constant thing that you have in this temporary world is Allah. And his support is very it's unconditional. And I think if you have that belief, and as uh, Faiza said, if you have that patience, I think you're able to overcome every single battle that you face. Exactly. Because you have two constant things. You have, you have God's support, which is unconditional. And you have patience that's going to help you um, overcome this thing. Yeah, and patience is key. It's not like, you know, make the world one day and expect it the next day after or like in a week. Or like putting a time scale on it, you know, mm -hmm. when it's right for you, it will come to you. And it's that's what being patient is, yeah. you know. It and makes like you trusting, stronger. Yeah. Like trusting in Allah's plan. Exactly. Like when you make that dua, just trust that whatever everything, happens yeah. is because it's best for you. And everything will fall in place. It's just being Because you don't know. He's the best of plans. You don't know what's best exactly. for you. So I think in terms... I think that makes us lucky yeah. that we don't have to have that stress of steering the ship because Allah's doing it for us. We just have yeah. to put effort in and he, he will take us to the best direction. I think that's quite exclusive to having faith yeah, i think you should take definitely. that as a blessing because your 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 uh, color is already written and is written by the best of planners all you have to do is put effort in and everything else is with him just leave it on top of him i think humans we don't have the capacity to do anything to be honest it's a lot that gives you the capacity mm -hmm. so don't i think just don't overwhelm yourself that you know i can't do this i can't do that it's not coming my way the the if you really really want it just seek god because it'll come your way or you will get something better yeah. and you, and that is a promise of god so i think you should take that away true that um before we get on to our main topic i think we're just going to brush up on one hot topic and i want that hot topic to be the preparations for ramadan because it's literally right around the corner inshallah mm -hmm. Um, about a week to go. I know. I'm, I'm actually really excited Me for too. it. 
excited? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, so any tips, guys, in preparing? I think is having um, conversations with yourself, what you want to achieve, um, kind of assessing like your strengths and your weaknesses, what you want to improve on. Um, you know, you don't have to do a big thing every single day. Allah loves constant. So it mm. could be a small little act, but you could constantly do it. Um, and Definitely. I think personally for me, it's about building my personal relationship with Allah, like talking to Allah, because that's something that I haven't been doing like throughout this whole year, making dua, personal, personal dua, just talking to him. I think personally for me, that really helps in terms of my faith, because mm-hmm. I feel like I have a connection and that helps me to do the other actions for him. So, you know, whatever works for you, you will know. Whatever works for you. Um, don't compare yourself to an- another person's journey because... Yeah, that's really yeah, important. Yeah, definitely. Because Allah sees you as an individual and you will be raised as an individual and your deeds will be raised as an individual. And it's, it's not, like the weight of your actions. It's the weight of your actions. Definitely. So that's a very good point, that it's the weight of your actions, it's not the volume. So what does that signify? It shows that Allah's looking at your sincerity and he's looking at your struggle because, you know, if there's no sincerity without struggle. So if you're struggling to do one thing and someone's achieving 10 things, it could weigh the exact same. It's your personal relationship with Allah. It's it's you and him. It's no, but there's no one else involved. So take that um, oh, with you in Ramadan yeah. and, you know, just focus on yourself and, and improving yourself. And you won't have time to focus on anyone else. Definitely. Amina? Yeah, I was talking about this with a friend the other day and um, we were just talking about like the goals that we want to achieve and um, I was saying how like a lot of people like it's um, rewarding, like you get a lot more reward to finish the Quran within Ramadan but um, obviously that'd be amazing if we could do it but we were talking about how we want to be just like uh, like pace ourselves and instead of rushing it um, but like reflect on it and because we're like kind of both in the middle of it at the moment we were like should we start at the beginning again or (laughs) or should we stay where we are and I was thinking if I like like I was kind of battling in my head like should I just start from the beginning but then I don't know I feel like it would be less sincere because I'm just trying to finish the whole thing like I want because at the moment because I've been trying to prepare I'm trying to like really reflect on it like not just read it but just like read the translation and stuff so if i just start from the beginning i'd kind of lose the flow if that makes sense Mm. so like i'm trying to be a bit more personal obviously it'd be amazing if i could finish it within the month which a lot of people do but um but yeah making it personal to yourself like the whole point of this month is to make yourself a better muslim like make get yourself closer to Allah so yeah. if that means that I continue from where I am now and that makes me strong at the end then that's mm-hmm. what I should do so yeah that's what I'm thinking I think it's also important because there's no shaitan as well yeah exactly it's a very good reflection of seeing of your yourself. weaknesses yeah, yeah. I feel um, like um, for me it's going to be a different Ramadan because I'm working full time before yeah, I had I had so much flexibility and I didn't it's actually back holiday though first pass yeah, what about the 29 days? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one. <laughs> At, At the least end, you get I think, into another it. Yeah, but, yeah that's true. Is, well, yeah, I that's think, true. I think it's the hardest. But I think, as I said first. before, yeah, and then the say. Ramadan slump kind of hit sometimes as well. Don't worry, we'll yeah. have a radio show to make sure we all graze up again. <laughs> yeah. But um, as I was saying, um, I think it will be a different kind of Ramadan for me because I work, I don't work in Luton, I work outside of Luton and it takes me one hour to get mm. from work and home and then travel and traveling and then, and then like I'll it's come home. tiring yes yeah, so I'll come home about half six ish and and then early morning wake up as well on top of oh, that don't try to discourage oh, me <laughs> <laughs> I already see it um but I think it's just kind of like trying to this is for I'm saying this publicly so I can remind myself later um I love that uh, yeah <laughs> um I think it's just kind of as I said before putting small Uh, acts in and making it constant like that one hour maybe I could listen to a podcast like a khutbah or something Mm -hmm. that's beneficial for me like every day maybe five ten minutes and then increase it like on your commute on my commute yeah do what you can so in in terms of like what can help me to strengthen my connection um and maybe read Quran like Mm -hmm. I'm not before it used to be the competition who can finish the Quran first but yeah that's what I'm saying like yeah need to be but I think as you get older you realize that it's not about 
of course, you know, reading the Quran in Ramadan is the best thing you can do. Yes. Yeah. But at the same time, is the best thing you can do is develop your connection with Allah that sets you up for the whole year. Hmm. So definitely, it's it's about kind of finding your own um, structure, I guess, in Ramadan mm-hmm. that you can maintain and don't push yourself too hard because yeah. then it demotivates you a lot. Do it, take a little steps out of time. Um, One thing that I saw was, um, which I think I'm definitely going to implement, and I think maybe a few others should too, is definitely uh, put £30 aside and just £1 a day, just donate it to charity. So then at least you've got every single day of Ramadan, just a pound. That's Mm. it. You know? Or maybe what you can do is if you have five friends or six friends, you can all chip to buy a well or something yes. or do something like it's a like community exactly. project. So, you know, use Ramadan, you know, to strengthen your faith, but help Definitely. each other to kind of get closer to Allah. That's real. Because it's, it's like it's such a humbling experience as well, because not only are you helping others um, around like everywhere but you're also helping yourself in terms of it makes you grow as a person you know to be humble for everything you have and this whole because i feel like the dunya can be so poisoning in terms of that it just greed isn't it it's literally the want and need for more and more and i want this and i want this and so many temptations around you and it just kind of humbles you and brings you back down like it's not worth it like these things materialistic things as well are they really worth it when that could go to benefit other people. Yeah, remember, like, um, your charity does not decrease your wealth. Definitely. And imagine in Ramadan giving it is... Uh, a pound time, a day. It's times by 70. Your rewards are yeah. times by 70. So imagine small, small things. Even using miswak, mm. using it. There's so much reward using miswak and using it in Ramadan. Imagine the benefits you would get exactly so do small small that's things that's like the beauty of our religion like such a it's so easy thing yeah. even if you smile even if you don't have a pound right you can smile like you can go talk to your neighbor it's your you intention like, exactly. it's definitely about your yeah. intentions how you intend to make positive impact that's what Allah's looking at definitely hmm. so i think all in all i think you know helping one another as well where we can because at the end of the day i feel like we're all gonna like struggle a little bit during Ramadan especially the long hours and people working people with exams people with uh, deadlines people you know going to school college etc we're going to find difficulty somewhere so remember that you know of course some people might lose patience because obviously food is food do you understand but like just keep in mind that it's not only you in the same position there are others as well old and young and it's so nice to see everyone just kind of come together, Help you know, with out iftar well. and everything as well. It's not just down to the women to clean up everything <laughs> afterwards, <laughs> but um, help out where you can with anything, the smallest things. You know, it's not just to benefit you, it's to benefit others as well. I think what is important before to go Ramadan, this is a massive reminder for me, is go in with a clean heart. Yeah. It, you underestimate if you have um, any grudges against anyone, or, you know, you have, you know, it, it's so clear easy. It up. Just clear it up. You know, do it for the sake of Allah. Let, free yourself from that. Free yourself from that toxicness. Free yourself from that hatred. And let, allow your heart to become a sponge of this goodness. Mm-hmm. I think, I think just, you know, and forgive yourself as well. Yeah. You know, if you made mistakes, if Allah can forgive you, forgive yourself and allow yourself to move forward. Definitely. But yeah, moving on now. <laughs> Ramadan um, deserves the whole show. Definitely. We will come to that during Ramadan, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so we're going to be now discussing modest fashion. So, girls, what do you think? Well, what do you think? What is modest fashion? We have like two minutes till the break, just saying. But okay, tell me so what is... No, no waffling, guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't waffle anyway. But anyways, those who are listening as well, please do get in contact with us. Let us know your thoughts because I think it's very prevalent right now mm-hmm. modest fashion uh, contact us on 0779481822 or they can call us in on the studio 0158241822 or you can um, comment on Facebook live stream let us know your thoughts for everything we discuss in now and the second half so what is modest fashion? Um, you always ask uh, long pause again <laughs> because you always ask like one word answers for the questions that like, it's not one should word I, answer. should I answer I okay go on you answer I have an answer for once wow yeah. <laughs> love. Um, well to put it simply it's mm. just fashion made 
easy for Muslim women, I'd say, or made suitable for Muslim women. Okay, that that's like yeah. What's I like fashion? That. Expressing <laughs> yourself through clothing. <laughs> She's a she's a fashion blog like blogger blogger. She's not a fashion blog. She's a blogger. This show. I'm literally gonna squeeze everything out of you today. Yeah. What try my best? What's this? What's this? Yeah. The, the, the time is counting down. She wants to ask me all these questions. All these questions. Now. All right. We have um, around 20 seconds till the breaks. Please do join us for the second half because this is where we get down to the nitty and gritty of what modest fashion is. I think maybe we're looking at nowadays what it actually means and how it's easy to get lost, how the meaning kind of gets yeah. lost and how easy it is to be influenced by certain things as well. So please join us after the break. We'll only be a couple of minutes, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to an Inspire FM podcast, making available our popular programs from our daily broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum and you're listening to Sisters Speak on Inspire 105.1 FM and just before um, the break we were discuss we were just broke into our main topic of modest fashion and now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of it and how can people do that Mariam and Amina? You can tell us please um, text or WhatsApp <laughs> us on 0779481822 you can call on 01582481822 and you can also comment down below on our Facebook live stream. Yes, please do let us know your thoughts because I feel like this topic, there's a lot to say, Yeah, I think. I think. Yeah, we want to bounce off of your opinions <laughs> yes. also. So, what is modest fashion? Do you want to just give us your definition again, Amina, of what you think it is? Um, I said that modest fashion is fashion that is made suitable or easy for... Muslims or Muslim women I agree depends I agree with that as well yeah anything else to add yeah I think it's just what does modest fashion include though as she said I think she hit the nail on the head it's suitable no but what does it include in terms of like clothing and clothes that are suitable for for Muslim women to wear I think it's quite well it includes a hijab <laughs> Thanks for giving us a clue. <laughs> job, guys. I was thinking, why is she stroking her head? Like, what was she doing? Yeah. Is she all right? The hijab, guys. Hijab and clothing, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then hijab, obviously. Like, but is it? That's why I'm saying. That's why obviously I said hijab, it, we're not we're not defining mark. it as a piece of, piece of clothing because obviously hijab comes in terms of, of your manners, your gaze, exactly. etc., etc., etc. It does. There's an extension. There's a, there's a wider meaning to that, and we're not defining it as one single thing modest fashion because oh, there's a there's a hadith for modesty is a branch of your faith mm-hmm. yes so, so it's what not does, just what you wear so it that is a very profound and it does define how yeah we shouldn't just take it very lightly or singularly and it's not just for women yes for there's no gender too. in that I, exactly because i feel like when it comes down to the modesty it's just the yeah, we associate. Of, it's, it's very interchangeable. Yeah. Women, modest fashion. I, I, yeah. I don't imagine men. Uh, yeah. Why I, is that? I don't know. It's because of society, guys. Modesty. Oh, the society yeah. comes in the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does it mean to dress modestly? It's um, when you don't show your figure. I would say so. But there's a lot of... Um, I guess there's a lot... When you go into like the modest fashion industry, when it's not 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 exactly about faith, well, faith isn't a big part of it in terms of like the manners of hijab. It's mm-hmm. more about just the two dimensional what it looks like, and that's just about fashion. Like, I think now it's being weaved into the fashion industry. Yeah, which you it can is. Say, I think uh, it's a lot now. <clears throat> yeah, on one hand, it's a good thing because we're getting like. We're getting um, exposure. Yeah, we're getting exposure. But not even exposure. There needs to. I feel like there's not much, as in in terms of clothing. Mm-hmm. Do you find modest clothing? Is it easy to find? I think now it is becoming now easier is. because of because it's being incorporated. because of the bloggers and yeah. I think they've the influencers done influencers and yeah influencers and all of them and I think it's become a lot easier now, but. Even like five years ago, it was a lot harder mm, because if you true. did look for actual um, Muslim modest brands, they would be really expensive. Yeah, actually, really because expensive. it's actually hard when you think of it uh, as a uh, business perspective to make your own clothes and start a business. You have true. to sell it 
um, at a high price, otherwise you're not going to make a profit. Profit, yeah. But then for like consumers, it no one wants to buy it because it's so, so pricey. Expensive. Like for a, yeah, for like a dress, it's what fifty pounds. Exactly. <laughs> so um, we yeah. did get a comment. Please leave your name. Uh, they said modest fashion includes coverage, as Muslim people should be covering and look cool. Oh, I like that. That's nice. That's the best thing. Like that. So do I. So they have and to look, look cool. cool. <laughs> Um, so what does it mean for you guys to dress modestly? There's something that um, Amina uh, touched upon is how expensive modest yeah. fashion is. And I think that, of course, from the business perspective, it is hard to yeah. uh, sustain a business. It's understandable. Then, But then we should take the onus on ourselves. So we should su- support small businesses and we should make a demand that they have that people have to go to them rather than mainstream. They should be our mm. Muslim uh, creators should be the competitors with mainstream. That's how it should be. We should be. We should give that support because mm. even then, I would say, you know, you can you can buy clothes with the intention of supporting someone's, you know, halal earning, and that becomes yeah, a good deed true. for you. And you're doing, you're wearing modest clothing. Mm. It's a win-win situation. And definitely, I think it's just about how we frame our thinking. What aspects do you think are most important when you consider dressing modestly? Just making sure it's like actually covered, following the guidelines of hijab. I think one for me is that if I can't pray in it, not wearing it. Yeah, that's a very good way to. Yeah, if you I can agree. pray in it, you wear it. Yeah, and I think that's where it's kind of like um, there's it, the lines are a bit blurred now in terms of modest fashion. It's more about um, it's more there's like less of a balance between faith and fashion and more on the fashion side definitely and i've struggled with that myself i'm sure mm-hmm. we've all struggled with it. we still struggle it's, it's a hard balance. especially for girls especially the society well. we live in yeah but um when i in my opinion we're being shown more of the fashion and less of what how we um how faith how we're meant to it. dress in terms of islam mm. and that it is quite difficult but definitely. then what makes it more difficult is when we're constantly being shown, shown it everywhere. that certain way of dressing and it makes you think, especially if you're a young person who isn't completely educated on um, on modesty for Muslims, it, like, you don't know, like, you think, oh, everyone's wearing it like that, yeah. so I, So then I fine. should be wearing because, it like that. Because she is like and that. she's Muslim, so that's okay. It makes okay. it okay. Yeah. So I think that makes it quite... So, do difficult. you think that the it's kind of blurred lines when it comes to modest fashion and Islam? Kind of. I think there's nothing wrong with it, but um, it needs to. But the what we're being shown, I guess, is makes it difficult. Definitely. Does that make sense? Yeah, Mariam. Um, to be honest, I'm not very into fashion, so it's for me, it's just like kind of getting my what head around. What do you? It. Okay, then what do you see modest fashion as? I see modest. Do you see it? I, I see modest fashion as, you know, like what you said, if you can't pray in it, then you can't really wear it, can you? Yeah. And I see it as a baggy clothing, like you can't see yeah. the figure. That's about it. Like that's very my very small perspective on it because I'm not very into fashion. But are you saying you it's ha- a small yeah. perspective, but that's like, that's what it is though. But then the like way you're dressing, you're... isn't that your way of fashion though? I guess so. That is the way you yeah. express yourself, but yeah. I don't put so much thought into it. Like, As in, would you say you don't put much thought into the trends, the current trends? Oh yeah, yeah. I'd because say I that. feel like we all have our own our own personal. Yeah, ways, of course, of course. Like, for example, if all three of us went to a shop, we'll all pick three pick different three different things. Yeah, three mm-hmm. different things. It's just because our own preferences. Just, yeah. It's just our own preferences. But so I'd say you don't follow trends. Then I don't think I really follow trends. Yeah, to be no, honest, I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, to be honest if I'm being completely honest with myself if I like something I'll get it if I don't like it Same. I won't get it yeah that's actually true I agree with that and like, like I, I like timeless pieces I would say if you talk mm. about fashion I like, I like timeless pieces <laughs> like I like pieces that are really simpl- simplistic I like colours that are subtle or overall is it hard to find it's very hard to find like you need to spend a lot of time like to fit in your requirements like has to be like long a little bit has long to, a little bit like no, long <laughs> like be, arms covered needs arms to be a can't little be bit sheer. like yeah can't oh, be see through really can't it's have slits layers can't have bloody holes layers. do you think that in the summer then can it be difficult to find modest clothing I same with winter it's, wait, wait, is it, wait is it harder 
to find modest clothing in summer or winter? So what I do summer. is I, I summer. wait get summer or winter. Oh, summer obviously. Really? Yeah. Summer is so Why, hard. Everything think? has hold. <laughs> Stick on a chihuahua and you're good to go. <laughs> well, that's true. Well, that's true. Or like maxi dresses. But then, but maxi, with maxi dresses, right? Oh, yeah, it's yeah, difficult be because, like, they they come without sleeves. But then, and nowadays, a lot have slits and like. Skirts so what and I do is I always buy clothes that I can wear both in the summer and the winter. So like, I like to wear long, long shirts. Because then I can wear it in summer, I can wear it in winter, and a long sleeve. That's just what I like to wear, and I can wear it to work. <laughs> Very cost effective. Oh, I like <laughs> that. That's really. Um, that's what I was just thinking about. Like, actually, that's wise. really minimalistic, and I respect that. <laughs> I agree. Mm. But I feel like in the summer, it's more about, well, let's say in the fashion side of everything, is to everything's so hard to find because it's just skin out. Yeah, and to put it re- simply, <laughs> because you need to keep cool. But when we need to keep cool, we need we still I need to like stay covered, which is difficult to buy from things, mainstream mm, clothing. Kind shops. of help. For me personally, like I love like flowy skirts and. Flowy. I find it hard to wear skirts, to be honest. Really? Yeah, I love them. I can't. I feel like I can't carry them or whatever. Like I can't wear them. I don't know how to wear it. It's a bit weird. How do you wear clothes, Marion? <laughs> I can't. No, 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 I can't explain the skirt thing. What I feel do you mean? like I can't. I can't pull. Not pull it off. I just. I feel like. You don't feel like yourself. I don't feel like myself. I feel like okay. I don't. I used know. to be like that with trousers. But then it's a work requirement now, so yeah, it just, just no. I genuinely stupid. like I I couldn't wear them. I felt so uncomfortable. I just felt they didn't go with yeah because when personally. you when you like but then obviously working now I'm like okay it's actually all right. <laughs> so when you when you're used to one thing or one preference like you yeah, can't same, it's hard to adjust. Yeah, I think so that was me trying to adjust with trousers, or yeah. jeans. But yeah. So, struggles. <laughs> tips for dressing modestly in the summer. I think you need to... Especially like, during Ramadan. You need to look for things that are, like, first look of all... Look for cotton clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and viscose. They're very good materials. But, but it's no, like if you, wearing if you can, undertops as well. That's what I'm saying. That's Basically, what you... Basically, that... Wear long-sleeved stuff. And if it's cotton and viscose... Then it's, you can wear in the summer and you can wear in the winter. All you have to do in the winter is put a jumper on. Then it makes winter clothes. <laughs> but if you're someone who follows it, trends, it, <laughs> obviously no, who, who doesn't? No. Okay, but okay, if you have if you have a winter trend, then just wear the color jumper that's in, in it, like yellow or whatever. Like. No, it's not about colors. It's about you know like actual clothes. <laughs> so we just have staples. They would just tell you just have staples. Like you know, have basic stuff that you can like. Adjust. Oh, I thought you meant staples, like actual. I was thinking, wait, what? And then I just realised you mean staple clothes. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't have a separate summer and winter wardrobe. I feel like I, I don't have, have a lot of jumper tops I have, I have a winter, lot of jumpers. Which I would never ever wear in summer. So technically yeah, it's kind of like a winter. Because I just wear jumpers. But then again, I, I'm wearing a woolly cardigan, so I always feel cold, so it doesn't really matter. Or you can even wear lightweight cardigans. Much. On top of like a maxi dress, for example, that doesn't. But then why would, for me, right? I don't. I feel like sometimes the cardigan ruins the dress. Yeah, yeah it and does. even the long sleeve tops, like the and whole the point. The whole point is to feel well. like you're not hot, and the, then if you're layering in summer, it's really difficult. So exactly. I think when you go shopping for like dresses and stuff, you just need to really Consider. keep it. But do you know what? I think in the summer, just. Um, like try to look at I think nowadays like I said before like five years ago is a bit harder probably a lot harder even three years ago to go to to shop from actual modest fashion clothing stores but now I've seen a lot more so maybe try to shop from them I'm Um, telling you it's really easy to find shirts like yeah. different colours <laughs> you know shirt trend. and also I think like do your research on what you believe is actually um islamically correct because i think we're getting lost in that yeah. like yeah i've got lost in it too like it's, it's yeah, quite i definitely, definitely struggle like, i'm not same. saying i'm not justifying like what i wear is right like, and yeah I, uh, I struggle as well and it's very hard to find some things because i feel like everyone has a different fashion sense in terms of what they see mm. and what they're comfortable in wearing some people might not be comfortable in for example what i wear compared to what you wear compared to what you wear do you understand mm-hmm. so again it's also kind of being mindful to that as well and i think a lot of people when you dress um like 
if you're dressing 100% correctly, which is amazing, I totally respect that. Yeah, I want to be definitely. like that one day, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, inshallah. But I also think some people see that as, oh, I can't express myself dressed in, like, um, a jilbab or an abaya. Like, I, you can still express yeah. yourself like you can i've seen so many jill bobs like i've seen a lot there of really so good many, companies by the way such nice styles. so many beautiful colors styles and like you can still have nice shoes and be modest and jackets <laughs> like there's yeah. there's no boundaries in terms of like how you can express yourself like Definitely. i think a lot of people are scared that um that when they put the hijab on or when they wear looser they start to wear looser clothing or when they start to wear an abaya that they can't be themselves anymore, which I'm guilty of as well. Like, I think, oh my God, I can't do that because I can't be myself. But it's not true. Mm, that's not true. Like, I've seen, I'm trying to, like, look for inspiration of people yeah. who dress more modestly than me to, like, you to know, motivate yeah. myself. You know what I love? I love the, um, like, balloon sleeves or, oh, like, I the hate flare that. sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends. Like, I think that, that's more of a girly style. <laughs> but <laughs> Mariam is giving her opinions today, guys. I know. Literally just put it straight out if there. If you hate that, there's the, the, the ones you that hate the that in your but, over there. But it looks good on certain people, so... If you but guys like it, it's great. I love it. There's actually a lot of love different it. styles of it, though. Okay. It's just like... It's like what? <laughs> Like it's just, I just find it so elegant. I just find I it think like, like your girly. wings or something like a bat. So I think maybe I Mariam's not into <laughs> girly stuff. Huh? I think maybe you're not into like the girly stuff because you said you don't like skirts. So maybe that's just too girly for you. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna try and get you into liking it. Like blue yeah, shit do. It's a strong word. There's everything for everyone. Okay, guys. Yeah, like, I love. I love giving a selection. Studio. <laughs> Oh, explain to me why do you like like balloon stuff like, not balloon stuff in terms of like it's just lo- I like flowy stuff okay yeah flowy I stuff I just love but how you look, look so nice you like you flow with it you know like I think it. she's just you trying to, to trick herself own. into liking it you don't have to like it <laughs> no, no, if someone I, sent us like modest dresses I wish <laughs> I could show everybody but I couldn't <laughs> on whatsapp Oh, okay. Well, thank um, you for that. We, uh, they're, they're quite nice, actually. Inspiration. Yeah, yes. I would definitely. say... Definitely. You can even find patent ones. Yeah, definitely check out... Learn like, to I'm, sew. I think I want to learn to sew, to be honest, because you can actually create your I think your I have stuff. a full-time job that does not allow me to even do that. <laughs> I have a full-time job, too, you know. I'm just but trying just, to be inspirational here. And it's my FM, okay? Be realistic and stay within what you can do. Within your bounds. I know how to knit. You know, really? Yeah. Interesting. Maybe you should teach us. I want to learn to knit. I'm all right. I haven't done it in ages, though, but... Yeah. No, you really you should... <laughs> no, it's better. It's better. Learn if you, like, you, you keep your mind occupied, like, rather than going on social media. Just knit. I haven't Do done that. it in a time, but... Yeah. Trust me, I think... It's not thought of the week, but uh, digressing from the actual modesty fa- uh, conversation, you know, learn a new skill. Like, it's good to learn new things. You'll, you'll, you'll feel like you've gained something different. And you'll feel like, you know, challenge different challenges because yeah. uh, who can say like, okay. okay, moving a little bit away from that, not maybe you can knit yourself a balloon sleeve, you know. I will watch me come next week. Okay. <laughs> um, what about hijab? That's a really vague question. Okay, <laughs> what, what do you think about the ever-changing hijab styles? Because I've, I think we've all seen it. Even now, we all have different hijab styles. Like I said before... Hijab styles are different everywhere. What do you think of them? I think we... Lost its meaning. doesn't matter what kind of style you wear. It depends... Like, well, it does. Depends Mm. what style you're wearing. I mean, I'm kind of lost my train of thought. Like, you can wear a certain style, um, but you need to... Like, if you like something, make sure you're... um, doing what it what you think is right do you know Definitely. what i mean like i i mentioned before like we're seeing a lot of things that are um veering a little bit away from faith in my opinion and more towards fashion mm-hmm. um and i believe you can have a balance like you can you can definitely have a balance bet- between the two and um with social media being becoming a lot bigger and a bigger influence in a lot of people's lives, not all. Um, it's important to reevaluate um, your own beliefs and opinions, and if you don't have those, then ed- educate yourself on it before you decide to follow 
um, what you're, what someone else is doing. Yeah. But do you think that sometimes it's everywhere, different hijab styles, you want to try it, then you kind of just go with it? It's like, for example, you know, that trend where to make the point thing in your hijab, like everyone was doing it. I don't see anything wrong with it yeah, as thing? long as you're... No, I'm just saying, like, uh, that's how much influence people have, obviously, like... Mm-hmm. The what thing? You know how, when, like, when the pointy, job was like, pointy, pointy, when pointy. that was... I think a few years ago, know, like, they used to be, everyone used to have a point in their hijab, and that was, like, that was just a trend. That's, like, oh, yeah, I and think Mary's the trying trends. to say that the power Oh, yeah, the layer influence. trend. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm just trying to say, like, just trying to... Yeah, there have been different ever I think if it's within the fold of Islam and... You know, you're trying your best to please Allah. There's nothing wrong with, like, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, if you want to express yourself, express yourself. I just think there needs to be a certain way, though, in yeah, terms of the I disrespect think what Amina as has, well to I it. I think what Amina has said was, like, it, it captures what hijab should be. You know, it should be, um, there should be a balance. Like, there's not, you know, Islam doesn't say, you know, you have to be rigid. You, everyone has to be one way. It's very individualized. So, you know, there's boundaries. Follow it, but you express yourself mm. within those boundaries. What are your thoughts on the burkini? <laughs> You What's your opinion? What's your opinion? Do you no, you know, first you explain. All, someone explain what the burkini is. Okay, the burkini is um, obviously it's a, it's, a, it's like a mish, mishmash of two words, a burqa yes. and a bikini put into one. So it's like the full body suit. Yeah, so it's a full body suit for Muslim women so that they can um, go, swimming. go swimming in mixed environments or even in segregated. I'd, but I would say maybe you would wear it, someone might wear it in a segregated environment but I think the purpose of it is so that women You're feel covered. comfortable yeah. to go swimming but the thing is um, not everyone will agree but it's like a, like a scuba diving suit right like it's it's tight yeah. but when you go swimming it I understand the sentiment behind it because the you want, like to the water sometimes as you well. want to go to the beach and you want to have fun, right? So you're gonna wear you you need something to wear, yeah. But at the same time, you need to be like it needs to be form fitting because then you can swim, yeah. But then at the same time, it's kind of difficult depending on who you are, like what you're comfortable with. Um, there are different versions it, of the yeah. There's quite the a few theme. versions. Like there's it's there's kind like of like a dress, dress and, le- yeah, and leggings, leggings, which I think is the main one mm-hmm. from what I've seen anyway. Yeah. Um but it's a is it a form of modest fashion? I think it's an alternative to alternative to modest fashion. <clears throat> no, it's an alternative to what ex- exist uh, ori- originally. So you know what people wear like mainstream swimwear is just an alternative for Muslims it's catering to them trying to con- t- cater to them, I guess. Mm-hmm. Would you consider it a form of modest fashion? Personally? I mean, I, as I said, I just think it's an alternative. It's, it's something that I'm dodging the question. I'm not dodging the question. I'm just stating yes my opinion. No. No, no, yes, no. <laughs> I, don't, I think it's like in two ways, like in terms of faith and fashion. I think it, it, in my opinion, I do think it's kind of ugly looking. So I don't think it's fashionable. <laughs> and I don't think it is modest either. But that's this, my personal To any preference. burkini creators, this is just our own and opinions and views, and we respect all no, other opinions. No, like, if you I want to wear it, then that's for some women who do Yeah, like, but I mean, you can I've really tried to look at it, and I just don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like okay. the, it's, like, it's like the balloon hand. I just look at it, I'm just like, no. Yeah. So... I'd rather just go to <laughs> swimming that is for women only. You know what? You, what do. you can just get like a baggy t shirt from like Primark and leggings. Like I that. think, well, I think that's what they're trying to but do. That I think is they're, what trying they're trying to, to make create. it. Um, yeah. I think they're trying to make it easy for you. Like, you don't have to shop around and get like yeah. this biker shorts and these weird scuba diving tops yeah. and pay like a hundred pounds. Like, here's what you need to buy just all in yeah, one. Yeah, that's true. I think that's great. It's like, feasible. Yeah. It is, yeah. definitely. I think the the intentions behind it i like it so but i it's just something that you wouldn't wear then i wouldn't wear it right hmm would you wear it mary i don't even go swimming i don't even have to swim so it doesn't right. it doesn't even but if you wanted to go like paddling in the yeah. sea <laughs> like with the kids or something with the kids what <laughs> so many kids <laughs> yeah but i have seen mothers wear it because of you know the yeah children i think i think as uh, i said like uh, it's it's 
it's a um it's there to facilitate with Muslim women yeah because mm -hmm. you know rather than shopping around you have something in one place. it's all in one with so. your head covered as well yeah oh yeah it they have a head, head cover so the you head don't covering. have to struggle with that either I think it's great then the initiative is great yeah also like <laughs> like I think on it's the great, other hand yeah. of what I said like it's what else can you make though like going swimming isn't I don't think uh, Personally, I don't think swimming is something you can do in a mixed setting because you can't swim if you wear loose clothing and that's... Definitely. Like, that's the it's whole point. Like when you swim, you need work. to be streamlined. Exactly. So that's why the some people may say the burkini isn't modest, but it's not... Because it's, it's not going thinking. to be modest because you need to swim in it. Yeah. But at the same but, time, can you wear it in a mixed setting? But on and the I contrary, say, yeah, so. you say, for example, you go to a swimming lesson where it's all females. I, I don't know. I wouldn't be comfortable showing my skin. Even if it was an all-girl setting, I would rather wear something a little bit yeah, modest. Yeah, so it's great for that. Yeah. So it's, they, they, yeah, you can use, find different purposes for it. Yeah, I agree. I think it. it they, I think it's a good yeah. thing to have out there for consumers. I mean, um, if you didn't have it, then we'd complain, so... Like yeah. Would we complain? I Did think we, we complain would. Before? I think I've survived a years wearing yes, leggings. No, but then for those people, like but then encourages it, it encourages yeah. some. I would say encourages mothers to take the children swimming. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah. encourages yeah. The well-being. Um, on that note, we're kind of finishing up now, but I think we can kind of establish that there are different forms of modest fashion. But we obviously can't touch on all of them. <laughs> and do your research. Yes, definitely. And if I feel like a strong message to put out there is if you can't pray in it, is there any need for wearing it? Consider that. But join us next week, inshallah, when it's Ramadan for our show, 6 to 7 every Tuesday. Salaamu Alaikum. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Why not tune in to our live stream at inspirefm.org and follow and subscribe to our social media platforms at Inspire FM Luton.